Hello everyone, my name is Blue Raven 666 and if the title of this video looks familiar, that's because my friends over at Radio Has Been just did a video like this. So, I think I'm about to steal me an idea. No, but really, I got permission from them to do my own version of their hot take on this subject and center an episode of Has Been Hotel Theories around it. Today, we will be diving into the mind of Alistair and trying to pick things apart to see what could be going on beneath his charming exterior. There's a few things that I'd like to point out before I start diving into the meat of the matter. The main one being that Alistair lived in a far different time period than what we know today. The early 1900s was a very scary time. The Axemen of New Orleans, the Segregation Era, World War I, the Spanish Flu, the Great Depression, disaster, fear, and despair surrounded Alistair for pretty much the entirety of his life as a human, and could have had an impact on his mental state as he matured into adulthood. There are countless things we could speculate about Alistair's past that could have led him to being the bloodthirsty radio demon we see in the show but we can definitely assume that he was close to his mom and his father could have been abusive or completely absent altogether. I tend to lean towards the latter simply because it feels like everyone tries to draw that conclusion when it narrows down to talking about these characters and the fact that Alistair is most likely Creole, i.e. multiracial, could have played a role as well. If this is the case, it wouldn't surprise me if Alistair's father left his mother in order to dodge any prejudice for getting her pregnant. As this was the segregation era, these relationships were looked down upon, and people of color and mixed races were typically met with hostility and alienated by the rest of society. If Alistair is part Creole as he's rumored to be, this hostility and alienation from his community could be what laid the framework for what he became later on in life. Radio has been theorized that Alistair could suffer from bipolar disorder due to his tendency to switch between his charismatic radio host personality and his sadistic serial killer personality. However, we mustn't forget that this is the early 1900s we're talking about here, a time when mental health wasn't quite as widely explored like it is today. If you were bipolar schizophrenic, depressed, or anything but a properly, fully functional human being, you were sent to the insane asylums where you could undergo electroshock therapy, lobotomy, or just be downright experimented on. There are even stories of mentally handicapped children being locked away out of sight, their memory from the rest of the community erased simply because they weren't normal. It's for this reason that I think Alistair didn't suffer from any mental illnesses in his past. He grew up to be a radio host, likely a fairly well-liked and popular one at that. So, what went wrong? How do you get a charismatic radio host who is also a prolific serial killer? Well, as I said earlier, racial tensions could have had something to do with it. It could be that the harassment he could have faced pushed him over the edge and he snapped, thus leading to him to kill his first victim. Now the question is, why keep on killing? Well, to answer that, we need to ask the question, why do serial killers kill? One could say the reason is unique from killer to killer, but the usual motives for serial killers is psychological gratification, anger, thrill-seeking, financial gain, and attention-seeking. Which of these sound like Alistair? Taking all of this into consideration, I'd say the motives that would suit a man facing hostility from others that just so happens to be a radio host would be driven by anger while feeding off of the attention from the media. With all the information presented thus far, I think it's fair to say that Alistair's dual personality is completely voluntary and within his control. You wouldn't expect a 1930s radio host to sound like a sadistic serial killer, and you wouldn't expect a serial killer on the hunt to be bouncy and charismatic like a radio host. There's a time and a place, people. 
Much like we see in the pilot, Alistair doesn't kid around when he says if he really wants to hurt someone, then he's gonna do it. But is this a quality that he's always had? Or is this something that came about later on? The way I see it, there are two possibilities here. Either yes, and that's how he's always done his business, or it was something that he learned later on, quite possibly the hard way. It's possible that Alistair has always followed this certain code, never stalking or chasing his victims and meticulously planning out every step of his crimes, killing his victims as soon as the opportunity presented itself. All the while, he was this charming, charismatic radio personality in the minds of the public. Or it could be that Alistair was in the practice of luring in and torturing his victims, which led to a mistake that resulted in him being caught. Or it could have been a lesson that he had to learn the hard way when he got to hell after his death. Skip the monologue and let's go. In the end, what exactly is going on inside of Alistair's mind? Uh, a lot. It, it, it's a lot. In summary, an absent father figure a life full of hostility and alienation, and a calculative mind that's managed to get him this far. All of this could shed some light on just how unspeakably evil Alistair could be, but I'm going to end this on one final note. Charlie believes that inside of every demon is a rainbow, and I believe that. Alistair has a soft spot somewhere for something, and I'm sure we're going to see it sometime in the series. That's all I have for this video, you guys. Thank you for watching. I'd like to thank Radio Has Been for giving me permission to use this topic in a video. A link to their channel will be in the description below if you want to check them out. And let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. My name is Blue Raven 666 and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye